So, we'd get, um, I'd buy this Cornish ice cream with these wafers. The wafers were the same shape as the slices of the ice cream once you'd cut it into blocks. And uh, you'd put a wafer on either side and then you'd eat the ice cream. So I'd go back home with the ice cream and I'd go back home with the wafers and I'd divvy it up and give everybody some and it was just enough ice cream, this block of ice cream was just enough ice cream to make six portions um, and we would um, sit and out on the you know, out on the wall in the garden or in a chair in the garden and eat ice cream. Um, my mum, who is Devon's nanny, um, her name's Norma, she, um, at that point in time, if I was like 10, she would have been about 27, 28, and um, she used to play Elvis all the time, and she used to have these LPs and she used to be playing Elvis and we'd be sitting eating ice cream and she'd be deciding what we were going to have for our evening meal and um, she loves to garden she ever since I can remember her she always loved to garden so we had when we lived in Ringden Avenue we had a patio a lawn and a little shed at the end of the of the lawn. She had roses, um, she had flower beds, she had big pots, big white pots that were on stands that had all kinds of flowers and what have you. And when she wasn't working, that's where you'd find her. You'd find her out in the garden pottering and sitting and, you know, sitting on a cushion, getting rid of weeds or turning over the earth with a trowel and you know, just making her go, because having a pretty garden was really important to her. She always had a birdhouse, and we'd just be sitting out there. The boys would usually have their ice cream in front of the TV, because in the late afternoon there was all kinds of cartoons and kids' programs that they used to like, and they used to sit and watch those kid programs and eat their ice cream, and I'd be out there sitting on the wall or a chair or something, talking to my mum while she was still pottering in the garden and after we finished having um, our ice cream she'd go in and she'd make orange squash which is a cordial that a fruit cordial that tastes like orange and you add water to it like a, it's like a syrup and she'd make orange squash or lemon barley water which was mine and her favourite and we'd sit and have a, a cold drink and then uh, as she started to make her way into the kitchen and while she was in the kitchen I'd sit at the living room um, for a little while and talk to the boys and find out what they've been doing but then I'd make my way into the kitchen and find out if she wanted some help um, preparing dinner and um, quite often she did so it would be things like you know preparing the vegetables um, peeling potatoes whatever it might might be. She usually would make things that were, especially in the summer, just easy and quick, like new potatoes, chops, and some salad. So it wouldn't take a lot of cooking and make the house real hot, because um, at that point in time we did not have, we did not have a um, uh, air conditioning system. Um, it wasn't usual and we didn't have one and we didn't even have fans we just if it was hot you opened the windows and that was it and um, so she'd make set up everything for dinner fix dinner um, put things in the oven to stay warm until my dad came home so that we could have dinner um, she worked in the evening for an hour or so up to uh, two hours depending um, depending on her workload so she'd go off and she was uh, always going out and about on a bike and she still has that bike she's planted it in her garden here in the US and pr 
prior to its life here, she used to cycle every day. Anywhere she could go by foot, she would usually go by bike. And she would go off on her bike to work and she'd say, Oh, you know, um, the chops are in the oven. She used to, like, bake them, uh, cut them off, and she'd tell me when, or she'd put the timer on the cooker so they would cut off at a certain point in time. She'd show me all the salad stuff that she'd prepared in the um, fridge. And she said, oh, about around six o'clock, put the new potatoes on. And by the time you've cooked the new potatoes, I should be home and we'll have dinner around seven. So in the summer, that's what we would do. Around seven to seven thirty, we'd have some dinner. And um, when she came home, my dad would normally be home about... Mm, around 6 to 6.30 and he worked for British Rail and the only time he was later than that was when he was working in pay offices and then on Thursdays and Fridays he could be much later he could be home um, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night so because he was paying out wages for personnel at um, different locations in London and he wouldn't get home till late but um, if it was a Monday through Wednesday, then he would normally be home between 6 to 6.30. And as I say, he was working up in London. Um, that was when I was like a teenager. If I was around 10, he would be working in the local uh, ticket office in Paddock Wood. And he was the paymaster and ticket officer in Paddock Wood. And again, he would probably be home around 6.00. Uh, because he would close up the ticket office around 5.30, quarter to six, and he would be home within about 10, 15 minutes of that. And within about half an hour of him being home, he would sort of wash up, watch the news, put his paper beside the, um, by side his chair, and then as soon as mum turned up, we'd sit around this big uh, table, all six of us, and have something to eat. Um... And meal times were very important. We weren't supposed to miss meal times. We were supposed to we were supposed to be home by meal times, no matter what we chose to do in our day, no matter how old we were, if we were still living at home. Well, um, I have some questions for my mum. So, what was your most memorable meal time around the table with? six of you around it? Ooh, um, I suppose my most memorable meal times were holidays. So if it was Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, a birthday, um, their anniversary, um, those are the meal times I probably remember the most. Unless um, we'd accomplished something or I'd accomplished something and Nanny would do us a special dinner. Rather than go out to eat like people seem to now if you're celebrating something, or we used to, um, before these difficult times of the coronavirus, people now seem to celebrate, or used to celebrate, um, by going out to dinner. And that wasn't really what we would do. I mean, occasionally we would go to um, this very nice Chinese restaurant, in a place called Maidstone, which was a tra train ride away. What was the Chinese food restaurant called? I I forget what the restaurant was called, but um, and I I could probably look it up and probably find it at some point. But um, they had this really unique way of cooking, or we thought it was unique, and they were cooked by the side of your table on these really hot plates and one of the favorite things that, that your uncle Eric would like and I liked and Popo liked was a thing called sizzling beef and they would actually cook it beside your table and then serve it on your plate and you would have it with noodles or the rice and um, whatever else that you may have ordered and Nanny ordered the same thing didn't matter if you had Chinese takeaway or you went to the restaurant she had cashew chicken and rice that her was and some noodles and she was that was her favorite thing she loved it very much 
Um, she's a very selective eater and she's got a very delicate palate and things bother her, her when she eats if she eats the wrong thing so she's very selective of what she eats but at the Chinese restaurant that was her go-to meal and she really liked it. Me and Popo would have um, sometimes a seasoning beef but we'd usually share a curry and we'd have like curried beef but an actual meal time around our table was um, that I would remember would most likely be Christmas um, or a holiday but if we take Christmas Nanny would, prevent, would prevent, um, prepare all the vegetables the night before so and I would help her you would peel we would peel big things of potatoes because roast potatoes were a big favorite and then carrots and um, uh, Brussels sprouts and um, Popo is really fond of green beans so we always had green beans and then she'd get up in the mid what well, it would seem like the middle of night because it was Christmas but it was actually about six or seven o'clock in the morning and she'd put in the turkey and it was always an immense turkey that would just about fit the oven and she would cook it uh, very slowly and keep basting it and those smells would be going through the house and you knew it was Christmas if you could smell the turkey you knew it was Christmas Day because that's what we would have on a Christmas Day rather than Thanksgiving because we didn't really celebrate Thanksgiving as such in England because it's an American holiday I mean we celebrate it in our home to um, on a popple but um, Generally speaking, you know, it wasn't a big deal in um, Britain. So, Christmas Day, smell of turkey. And she'd be cooking sausages and she'd be cooking bacon. And and the reason being is um, Christmas morning, it was very much a tradition to get a big bread roll. And she would put like egg and bacon or egg and sausage and put that on a big old napkin and say, here, breakfast <laughs> because she was cooking so much and we'd sit and have that and the guys would drink milk and I would drink tea and I would I'm allergic to eggs so I don't eat eggs but I would have like a bacon roll or a sausage roll or whatever and have a nice cup of tea and then she'd put out our baby blankets and the Christmas unwrapping of presents would begin and um someone would stand and hand out a present at a time and you'd sit on your baby blanket open it up and show everybody and everybody go wow you know <laughs> wow that's awesome yeah. and uh so and it would be leading up to uh the christmas dinner because christmas dinner was always after the queen's speech and queen's speech was if i remember correctly it was around three o'clock so around three thirty, you knew you were going to have christmas dinner and you would have been eating, um, like I say, you'd start your day off with like a, a big, big crusty roll with some sort of bacon, sausage, egg and bacon, if you that was your cup of tea. And then we always had these huge tins of um, quality street chocolates and roses chocolates. So you dot if your hand in and whatever you could pick up, like one of those mechanical grabbers, whatever amount of chocolates you could pick up, you'd sit there, stuffing your face, open presents, eating chocolate. Nobody would tell you off because they thought, you know, it's totally awesome and completely um, understandable and okay. And then once you'd, you know, you'd be sitting in your pyjamas opening presents and stuff, once everybody had opened presents and had their stockings and all that sort of thing, you'd go have showers and put some sort of, clothes on that were comfortable to be indoors and uh, Nanny would make everybody some hot chocolate or a coffee if it was pop or um, sometimes I'd have hot chocolate sometimes I'd have a tea sometimes I'd have a coffee it just depended on how old I was and what I fancy at that point in time but the boys would always have hot chocolate and she would put marshmallows and a big dollop of cream on top of them and it would be like the Christmas hot chocolate and she would get a flake which is that rippled chocolate that you like and I like 
and she would give them a flake and say, uh, and you, you get little, there was these little flakes that you could put in 99s, which is ice cream, and uh, she'd give everybody a flake to put in their hot chocolate, and be, uh, people would sit round, um, you know, the guys, all the guys, because I have three brothers, there's Mark, Jerome and Eric, and then there'd be Popple, and they'd all be in there watching television, there's usually some sort of movie on, so they would be sitting and watching a movie, and I'd be ha helping Nanny with dinner. And she would do the cooking on the whole part, and she would get me to lay the table. And I used to like to make the table look really fancy. So really pretty tablecloth, napkins, Christmas crackers. Um, I would put little gifts on everybody's um, placemat. I would... Um, write their name on their little gifts so they know, you know, where to sit. Um, glasses for drink, really our most pretty um, plates that we, because Nanny always had really pretty plates to eat off of, so I'd find the prettiest plates that she had, put them on the table, make sure that the knives, forks and spoon, all the cutlery was really nice and shiny, ready for that, you know, Etiquette. Yeah, uh, for that big meal, 